Greetings, hello, good, good afternoon, praise God. Good afternoon. Amen, praise the Lord for another glorious day. He has blessed us to see we can do all things through Jesus Christ, which gives us the strength. Mm. Uh, come on into the room, come on yes, in. Yes. Come on in to the Cyber Sanctuary. Uh, it's time for our uh, Saturday High Noon Marriage Enrichment uh, Bible Discussion. I'm Amen. Al Jackson, Minister Northside Church of Christ, and joined by my wonderful, lovely wife. Thank you, dear. I'm Anissa Jackson. Welcome, Amen. welcome. Come Amen. on in. Amen. Amen. Come on in. Spread the word. Start your watch parties. Uh, let your social media network know Amen. that the truth is streaming right now. Amen. It's time for us to go uh, to the Word of God. We're going to give you a minute. We're going to give Amen. everyone a minute or so to join in. So good to have the Nobles family yes. with us. Uh, God bless you. Uh, Foreigners family, God welcome. bless you. Welcome, welcome. Good to good have to, you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, we're, we're encouraging everyone to uh, come on into the room. Thank you so much for being with us, mm -hmm. uh, joining with us today as we discuss God's holy and divine yeah. word for the married couples. Everyone is invited. Everyone's invited Everybody. to this Bible discussion, <laughs> uh, but the subject will be geared towards more of the married couples. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, high noon. This is what we do. It's what we do. Northside Church of Christ, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we, we encourage you to send us your likes. Um, send, you know, like the Facebook page. Uh, subscribe to Northside Church of Christ YouTube Easy. channel. And follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. And so I'm so glad to have my wonderful wife with me today. It's so great to be here. Yes, great to Good be to see here. Everybody joining us. Good to see everybody joining us. Yes, we're joining us. Joining us means so much to mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister P Peterson family, Sister Peterson and family for joining us. Uh, 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 Williams family, uh, Prosperity uh, family. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Newsom family, Milwaukee. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sister Newsom. You've been with us many times. Thank you for Please. being uh, joining in with our our broadcast. We as we're waiting for others to come on into the room. Uh, come on in. Come on in. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Please right. uh, share this video. Uh, please start your watch parties and let everyone know, know that the truth is streaming right now. Uh, who else we have with us? So we, we got the Butler family. Mm hmm. Great to see mm -hmm. you, Butler family. Great to see you all. Great to see you, yeah. uh, Holden family in Gainesville, Florida. Yeah. Thank you, Butler family. God bless you. Kiss the, kiss the babies for us. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Stevens family, Crystal, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, McFall, bless your brother. Uh, God, God bless you. Uh, great to see you. Give the preacher our best. Uh, we're glad to have everyone, have everyone with us today. We have a, a lot of good scriptures to get to uh, in a short time to get to it. So we're going to get right to it this afternoon. Uh, please send in your hearts, your likes, and um, continue to uh, spread this great word. Uh, we encourage you. Start your watch parties. And we appreciate you all for joining in with us today. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer at this time. Great Father in heaven. Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, we come to you. We come to you in humble submission. We come to you giving honor, glory, praise to your matchless name. Thank you so much, first of all, for Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Thank you for the avenue of salvation that is in Jesus. We praise you for every breath. We praise you for every uh, inspiration that you have had, dear God, that you uh, shed down your countless blessings and expressions of love for us we pray for all members of the lord's church the land the country and the world over we pray that we all will be focused on you that everyone will be well we pray that we have the opportunity to continue to spread the glorious gospel of jesus christ but we pray also dear god for everyone in our world at this time everyone who's yes. suffering everyone who's hurting everyone who is battling or who has been affected uh, by COVID-19 in one way, shape, or form, whether it be health, whether it be finances, whether it be family problems, or interruption of, of daily life. We pray for the children, dear God. We pray for the children that their hearts and minds will be comforted. Uh, and we pray, dear God, for the environments, challenging environments that many of them are growing up in. Yes. Help us to be a source of encouragement and nourishment for them. We pray for all the married couples, dear God, and help us to continue to study your word so that we can be better couples, better 
husbands, better wives, uh, that can produce better families, that will help the church to be better, which will help the world to be better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Great to have you Stricklers with Amen. us. Uh, Jones family, God bless you. Uh, we appreciate you all. Oates family, Brother Greg, God bless Amen. you, man of God. We're going to go to the Word at this time, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a lot of good scriptures to get to uh, and a short time uh, to get there. Uh, and this is our, for everyone that's joining in, maybe some for the first time, this is our Marriage Enrichment Saturday High Noon Marriage Enrichment Bible Discussion, Northside Church of Christ, Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Charlie McClendon is a senior minister. I'm Minister Al Jackson. We're co-ministers together, and we give God all the glory, the honor, oh, the praise, and the Amen. thanks. Uh, for your presence today, and I'm so glad to have my wonderful wife with me today. So we're going to go yeah. right to the Word. <laughs> yes, yes, right to God's Word. Let's start uh, over. Oh my goodness, we've got so much to get to. Let's start in uh, Proverbs chapter 15, uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Uh, as we turn over there, Proverbs 15, 1 through 4, uh, Charlie J, Gainesville, Florida, we love you all. Love to you and the family. family. Um, turn over to uh, Proverbs 15, verses 1 through 4. Uh, thank you, Sister Mary. You're right. My wife is beautiful. You are oh, so correct. Thank you. You are <laughs> correct. Bless thank you. you. Um, Proverbs 15. I'm trying to focus on doing this lesson here. Uh, try, I'm trying to focus. <laughs> um, Proverbs 15, verses 1 through 4. This is a powerful lesson, and we're yeah. talking about communication today. Yeah. So join us as we... Uh, discuss this uh, this uh, lesson topic, and it will be helpful, we believe, to the mm -hmm. Lord's church and to the body of Christ. Uh, Cromarty family, God bless you. Proverbs 15, verse 1 through 4. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, Beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Amen. Amen. So the proverbial writer, the writer of the book on wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, talks about communication. And that's what we're, and our, and our subject uh, today, our subject today, it is very powerful. Proverbs 15, the scripture, Proverbs 15, 15 chapter, verses 1 through verse number 4. Uh, Proverbs 15, verses 1 through 4. Um, and our subject is, don't be a verbal assassin. Don't be a verbal right. assassin. Mm -hmm. My goodness, that's very strong that's language. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's, that's heavy. That's deep. <laughs> My goodness. Proverbs 15, verse 1 through 4. Don't be a verbal mm -hmm. assassin. Uh, and many of us know from movies, TV, and and uh, from uh, all these different social media outlets and the internet, and, and that the, that phrase assassin uh, it means a killer, a murderer. It means to destroy. It means to kill. And what we're, what we're talking about is a verbal assassin. assassin. So what, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? This makes me think of um, the, the killing and the violence and just showing how um, verbally with the tongue, you can kill with the tongue. Mm -hmm. You can hurt with the tongue. Mm -hmm. and, and with the verbal assassin phrase, it sounds like you could really uh, destroy yes. with your tongue. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. You can destroy with the tongue. Mm -hmm. You can kill with the tongue. And we have to get help right. so, so that we do not become verbal assassins. Mm -hmm. Verbal assassins. Proverbs 15, verse 1 through verse 4. Ty Moore, bless you. Good to see you. Sister Erdine Johnson, God bless you and your family. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all for joining us. Appreciate We're talking it. about... Uh, don't when our subject is don't be a verbal right. assassin. So, mm -hmm. but this scripture is very helpful, and there are many scriptures on this subject. Uh, we're trying to help and encourage each of us uh, to not to be verbal assassins, not to kill with words. In marriage, uh, we have to be extra special. Uh, we have to be extra careful mm -hmm. um, not to hurt one another uh, in this way. Uh, thank you 
for the, for the comments. That's right, Brother Greg. There's power in the word. The, our words have power. Extreme. Our words have influence. Mm -hmm. Our words uh, have, have can, can construct or destruct. Our words can be used for construction or destruction. So we have to be careful uh, about being verbal assassins, just like a, 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 a physician, a doctor. Uh, he can take the same scalpel and he can, uh, in surgery, he can heal the patient or he can kill the patient, but it depends on how he applies uh, the, the, uh, the scalpel. All right, so it's very, very important. Uh, Sierra, bless you and your family. Uh, kiss the big, kiss the baby for us. Uh, God bless you. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we um, construct with our words yes, instead of destruct, destroying with our words. So Proverbs 15 and verse 1, uh, as some, some have said, I've never studied this chapter. Yes, it's very powerful here. He says, a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir, stir up, up anger. anger. Now, in relationships and marriage, there are going to be disagreements. Yes. We're going to disagree about certain things. Uh, right. My wife and I disagree about things, but we have to know how to communicate yes. one with another. So what do you think about that? Definitely have to know how to communicate and, uh, and be respectful of one of another. You know, and you need to yeah, treat each right. other the way you would like to be treated. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very, very careful and how you treat one another. And um, the verbal assassin is something that we do not want to be. We're, we ought to uplift and we ought to um, edify one another. So that we don't need to be assassins in our relationship for sure. And that, that's something that we have to assess uh, because sometimes the message that is sent is different than the message that is received. Mm -hmm. uh, something that um, I may say my family is a big joke. It's funny. It's no problem. Uh, but in uh, her estimation, it may not be that funny right. uh, and vice versa. So learning how to communicate mm -hmm. with one another is very important. My wife and I, we've been counseling couples in regards to marriage for, my goodness, yes. over 20 years now. Definitely. Um, and with that experience, uh, you see everything. You see right. everything. We have seen just about every scenario, but we tell people there there are many different aspects of marital relationships mm -hmm. that we talk about, but I think the top two are a, a spiritual relationship with God right. for the husband and the wife, their own individual mm -hmm. dedication to God, and then number two, communication. Yes. Communication. Is key. If mm -hmm. you can get those two right, get those two down, have your relationship with God and communicate effectively with one another, mm -hmm. that will help you in money matters, that will help you uh, in uh, disagreements, that will help you in making decisions for the children. So right. communication is very important. Right, and I feel that um, if you prioritize, you know, all the other things, will it'll trickle down to the other facets of your marriage. So if you get to think, get, put Christ first mm -hmm. and work on that communication, then all other things will kind of fall into place. So mm -hmm. that's very important to prioritize in the marriage. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. very important to prioritize yes. in the marriage. So he says, uh, the grievous words stir up anger. Mm -hmm. So when, when we, this could be, this could be applied to marriage, this could be applied to your uh, life on the job that you work. It, this could be applied with your relationship with your children. Yes. This could be applied with your relationship with brothers and sisters in, in Christ, in the community. So we have to make sure that we pay attention to uh, the words we say, and we're going to get down to talking about the tone. Uh, so, so it's not just the words we say, but it's also how, how you say it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> how careful. you say it. Yes, yes, she helps a brother out. How you say it, because a preacher preaches. I preach, man. I can just opt that. Yeah, what, what you need to do, let me tell you what you need to do. But she say, hold on, hold on wait. Hold on, watch, your tone. <laughs> watch your tone. Your tone has to be <laughs> has to be right. Because yeah. uh, you know, think about it. A preacher is gonna preach. A lawyer, he's uh, he, he or she is cross-examining witnesses all day. So, so, so they come in and cross-examine your spouse. Yes. 
uh, interrogate, interrogating your spouse, <laughs> um, looking for the little word. Wait a minute. You said you said you got there at 4.15 p.m. Uh, uh, 10 minutes ago. Now you're saying 4.21. Wait a minute. What do you mean? What do you mean? What, what, happened? what happened? What are you leaving out? <laughs> I'm at, uh, so... Your, and that's another big part. Oh, my goodness. We counsel oh, so many couples on this. Your intimate, personal marriage relationship is much different than your job. Don't, yeah, yeah. We've got to work hard not to bring the job home uh, to the marriage. Uh, you got They're different. And like you said, a preacher's going to preach, and then I'm a teacher. So I explain <laughs> a lot and over-explain sometimes. So I'm guilty as well. So... We have to just, you know, be mindful of how we're sounding and how much we're saying and, and you know, in the manner in which we say it. So yep. be careful. Be careful. <laughs> be careful. Louis Ponciana Jackson, God bless you. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Sister yeah. Peterson, thank you. Unkind words are said. You can't take it back. We have to <laughs> learn, and we're going to get to that. Uh, thank you for setting us up very well. Uh, because we have to be careful about our words. James says, if we can control the tongue, Everything else falls into place. Yeah. He said that tongue yeah. is a unruly fire. Tongue is full of deadly mm -hmm. poison. It sets on course the fire of hell, mm -hmm. and it, it can it can lead you to hell if you're not careful. So you got to have the mind converted so the tongue can be converted. But we're exactly. we're, we're working to get there. Uh, we're working to get there. So yeah. um, thank you, Strigglers. You're right. We have to know what to say, how to say it, and you when know. to say it. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. the timing is off, right. and you want to say. What needs to be said to help the situation, help the family, and not hurt the family. Right. Okay, so Proverbs 15 and verse 2, uh, ride, ride with us. We're, we're going somewhere here. Proverbs 15, 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. That, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, we, we can have knowledge, mm -hmm. but the tongue of the wise, uh, he says uses knowledge aright. And I, I just like to use examples from current events, pop culture. Uh, if you paid attention to uh, Barack Obama's speech at the funeral of uh, John Lewis, it was so powerful, he had a lot to do. He had a lot to accomplish in a short amount of time and be respectful to John Lewis and his legacy, but he also, he put that first, but he also slipped in a few messages oh, wow. here about a, a, some kind of upcoming election coming up, some, you know, somewhere some. in the United States. <laughs> uh, but, but what's my point? You've got a, a Proverbs 15, verse 2, the tongue of the wise mm -hmm. uses knowledge aright. Mm -hmm. you, just because you know something, just because you have knowledge in a certain mm -hmm. area, that doesn't mean you can just be offensive or be rude or any of those things. So we have to be careful about that. The tongue of the Proverbs chapter 15, verse 2. I know this is tough today. I know this is tough. You want to hear God going to make everything all right and he's going to bless you with abundance and, and <laughs> prosperity. prosperity. Showers yeah. of blessings are coming your way. This is how the uh, showers of blessings come your right. way. Your blessings. By learning how to communicate That's with right. your spouse. God put us together. And guess what? We are different. We are different. Very. Somebody hashtag that in the comments. We are different. We are different. If you, yes. as a wife or and a husband, if you have some differences mm -hmm. between yourself and your spouse, put put that in the chat. Now, if y'all are exactly the same, don't say anything. But if you all are different, <laughs> hashtag we, we are, are different. different. Uh, and there's some single people on with yeah. us today right now. If you and your children are different, put that in there. We are different. We are different, we are different because you're communicating mm -hmm. every day with someone in some way, That's especially right. in this social media age. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. foolishness. Thank you, Tynessa. Thank you, <laughs> Fisher family. Thank you. I've got some uh I I've got some some honest people here with me. We are different and we have to learn to work together. Yes, Thank you do. Charlie J. Thank you Strigler family, Tompkins family. We Amen. are different, but God put us together yes, to learn how to work together. Uh, I often say 
that she is the sugar to my Kool-Aid. I'm the cool, I'm the Kool-Aid, and she is the sugar. She is the sweetness of my uh, that that help that. Okay, I better I better keep moving. Thank you. <laughs> But we are different. <laughs> we are different. Why does God put you with someone that's different so you can grow? You can't grow being with someone that's mm -hmm. exactly like you. Right. Uh, if there, um, there's only one Al Jackson in the world. Thank you, Lord. Only need one. Mm -hmm. um, only need only one. Need one. <laughs> Thank you. In a good way. <laughs> I'm thankful for and, my one. <laughs> and if, if there were two, one of us would be unnecessary. Right. So the, there's, the only way you can grow is by learning to gel with others that are different. That goes for marriage. That goes for members of the mm -hmm. Church of Christ. That goes for differences on, on your job with your co-workers, teammates on your job, True. differences in military platoons. Each person in the, in the unit, military unit, brings different gifts, talents, right. and abilities on, in sports teams. The different gifts, talents, and abilities, you can't do the same thing. Everyone has to have a unique job. So appreciate the differences in the marriage. Yes and learn how to communicate better with one another, okay? Uh, the eyes, uh, verse three, Proverbs 15, oh my goodness, we've got, so we're gonna keep moving here. Okay, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Mm -hmm. Okay, eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil, evil and the good. And the good, mm -hmm. how you make it like? Here, just tap it. Okay, that's. We're adjusting the, the light a little bit or trying to. We're trying to. Okay, I'm tapping. It's okay. Okay. All righty. Okay. The eyes of the Lord are in every mm -hmm. place, beholding the evil and the good. Okay. God's word is right. God's word is good. Okay. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. Now, we're, we're talking about this is our virtual marriage enrichment Bible study. Proverbs 15, and our subject is don't be a verbal assassin. Yes. Don't be a verbal assassin. I saw a, I saw a documentary uh, about a gentleman. We're always studying to improve our lessons for you. And I saw a documentary by a gentleman, uh, and we're going to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. And he was saying that he, in his marriage, he was a verbal assassin. And he was about to lose his wife. And I, that really touched me that he decided to make changes in himself uh, to ensure that he wouldn't lose his wife. Now, let me say this. Um, I was debating about whether to say it was a male or a female. Look, women can be verbal assassins too. Some men are verbal assassins. Some women are verbal assassins. Some husbands, sometimes it's the husband. Sometimes it's the wife. Sometimes it's both partners. God help you if it's both of you. I'm, 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 well, we're we're going to pray extra prayers and supplications and intercessions for you. Sometimes it's both. And mm -hmm. it just goes back and forth, back and forth. And we have counseled with a number of couples. And sometimes uh, one is the verbal assassin. And it brings uh, problems in the relationship uh, if, uh, if you have that. Now, mm -hmm. he, he studied about himself. And he said, verbal assassins. And uh, he said, verbal assassins, like me, are, are in marriage, are critical, sarcastic, disrespectful, fault-finding, uh, intimidating, sharp-tongued. He's talking about himself now. Offensive, cynical, and harsh when communicating with, with their spouses. Now, again, sometimes the verbal assassins are husbands, sometimes the verbal assassins are wife, wives, and it all has a lot to do with your upbringing, your background, a lot of pain that you have from childhood. Uh, now, some people, they can be offensive, yes. and I, we, we, we know some couples that they just, go, we go out to dinner with them and they just right. go at it. And we're just looking like, Son. what in the world? And <laughs> they're just as happy as they can be. And I said, look, my wife and I said, uh uh, don't talk to me like that. I know that's right. <laughs> don't joke. I know that's don't, right. Don't joke with me. <laughs> but, but hey, if they're happy, whatever. Okay. But, but sometimes <laughs> one is that way and it hurts the other person's mm -hmm. feelings. 
and and it assassinates that person. That it d digs down deep into that person. My wife and I, uh, when it comes to our talents growing up, I played sports. I was always playing sports. Right. I was always getting bruises. I was always getting hurt. Um, she was more into music right. and education. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord. And she wasn't into the stuff I was in because, um, thank God, the house, the house is together and the family together. Um, and I've, I've, I've got a smart wife. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But but how she reacts to getting injured is different than how I would oh, yes. react. So I have to be concerned for her and not, oh, I got a bigger bruise than that playing football, oh, whatever. Well, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but but we both bring something to the table. Right. That, that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. But this man said he was a verbal assassin. He uh he has a, a big YouTube channel. Uh, but but what we're trying to assess is how we can avoid becoming verbal assassins. He assessed himself, and he said I've been critical, sarcastic, and I would use sarcasm, um, and say I'm just kidding to my wife. And my wife, he said his wife hated that. Mm -hmm. Verbal assassins are always on the defense. This is his; these are his words. An admitted verbal assassin, um, always on the defense, ready to argue um, with anyone that challenges yeah. their worldview. This is wow. what he said. He said verbal assassins have a passion for debating. Wow. Uh, they like to play the devil's advocate, even when they agree with you. If, if a person now, these are his words. If a person yeah. says. Uh, the, the, boy, it's a beautiful day today. A verbal assassin will look for a cloud just to start a disagreement. Prove you wrong. What about that cloud right there? What oh, about? And, and again, sometimes verbal assassins are women. Sometimes verbal assassins are men. Uh, so we have to check ourselves, okay? Uh, whatever you say, a verbal assassin will say the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, if, that just to get a, a disagreement going, a debate going. Right. They don't believe that they're always right, this gentleman said. He said verbal assassins don't believe they're always right, but they believe their spouse is almost always wrong. Mm -mm. Verbal assassins. He said they're critical, judgmental with spouses and sometimes children. Uh, they often degrade and ignore others' opinions and advice and beliefs. Now, this is... Now, they also interviewed the spouse of this verbal assassin, and the spouse said, because of the way I was treated, I, mm. I couldn't relax when my spouse was around. I couldn't relax when, when my spouse was around. The uh, person that was the, the other person, the, the spouse, the wife of this verbal assassin, she said, I grew up, um, I mean, I grew, uh, let me rephrase that, I grew to hate my spouse's presence. That's, that's horrible. I, I just, because I knew that's horrible. I was right. going to get uh, uh, attacked in some way, mm -hmm. shape, or form. Um, and that, that, that person said, there he goes again. Mm -hmm. um, and that person believed that the good part of the marriage was over. That person believed that the good marriage phase of the honeymoon phase was over. Mm -hmm. This is the real deal. Get used to it. Grow up. You'll never be happy again. I see. But what, uh, and this person said, I was frustrated. I was disconnected. So I reacted too. I re she said, I reacted negatively too. Mm -hmm. I was cold. I was, un I was emotionally distant, uh, sexually distant, and I just checked out. But this gentleman said, I had to learn to work on myself. I almost lost my marriage. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to work on myself, and I and started to uh, watch. Uh, started the things changed when they started to watch programs like this about marriage, about communicating, yes. about reconciling, bringing things back together. Now, let me say this: Northside. Mm -hmm. This is no one at Jacksonville Northside Church of Christ. <laughs> this is not anyone in the Church of Christ. Okay. Anywhere. I've got Church of Christ folks. We have them from all oh, in from Florida, Georgia, Milwaukee, North Carolina, New York, New York <laughs> listening right now, watching us right now. There's it's not it's not anyone in the Church of Christ. But I was touched by this story mm -hmm. uh, about this man, not in the church, but in not in the Lord's church, in another organization. But but he said I started watching and listening to 
the, our preacher's lessons about marriage and asking my wife to, to listen to, uh, to them as well. She was upset. She didn't want to hear it. But he was persistent. He was patient. He continued to compliment her. And she said, I noticed the changes in him even after I checked out emotionally. But I started to say, well, let me give it a chance. Let mm -hmm. me give it a shot. And then as they kept watching the videos, they learned, they grew, and the marriage got back together. But he had to be persistent. He had to apologize. He was yes. complimenting her. His, his, his way of interacting with her changed. Back to Proverbs 15, verse 1 through 4, and Ephesians 4, 29, he started to apply these scriptures, and the marriage got better. And it sounds like they had to go all the way back to square one, all the way back to the foundation of biblical principles to work on that marriage. And in mm -hmm. the beginning of the story about the verbal assassin, it just sounds like, you know, I just thought of negativity breeds negativity. It's contagious. So when the husband was coming at the wife, um, you know, in a negative manner and um, with that terrible verbal uh, exchange, um, it just seems like, you know, then, then the wife wanted to retaliate and, and shut down and close out and become bitter and also shut down on, on the physical part of the relationship because um, when that happens, when the wife is hurt emotionally, uh, she will shut down. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So don't, you know, when the wife is at, in that state, don't come at her trying to be romantic. It's like, <laughs> I'm not trying to hear that. But, uh, but, but. But it's about, you know, coming together, apologizing, mm -hmm. and working on the marriage and working on building her back up yes. when she's torn down. Yes. Build her back up, like you said he did, with compliments, and that helped to build up the marriage. And also watching um, the spiritual programming and, and uh, watching the sermons and whatnot that was going to help the, the marriage. And so that really seemed to really help to go back to the spiritual foundation. Right and build from there. Right, absolutely, go back to, and that's exactly what he said, we had to go back to square one, we had to start, he said I had to learn how to communicate all over again, and yes. it was it was great to see as he admitted his faults, she admitted her, she said hey, I'm, I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. but I had to learn to give things a chance as well, yes. and she also mentioned that as as long as we were trying to fix each other, nothing got better. But go. once, she said, once he worked on himself and I worked on she myself, worked on mm -hmm. then the relationship got better. Now that goes back to our message on last Saturday from Ephesians 5 verse 18 yeah. about being filled with the Spirit. Uh, I, I read from Ephesians chapter 5, 24, I read from that chapter for 20 plus years yes. and we go straight to verse 23 24 husbands love your wives wives obey your husbands uh, all those yeah. things which are good mm -hmm. but before Paul gets to that he go. says be filled with the spirit get a get a spiritual fill up from the Holy Spirit from the Word of God prayer worship etc then that'll give you the strength there to you go work on the marriage so exactly. so the wife said he kept complimenting me his words changed he yes. was persistent he he didn't give up he said i'm not right. going to give up on this on on our marriage and he had to learn to communicate all over again now when the wife is the verbal assassin um she has to pay attention to the same things her own um words etc but understand from a male, from a man, husband's point of view, uh, that type of takeover attitude, that takeover perspective, is very unattractive to a man. There's you can you can topple kingdoms, sisters, with your words, Person. and have <laughs> women wow. have to topple very powerful, very powerful. Mm -hmm. very powerful. Uh, you can calm down an angry man with your words uh, it's, it's very uh, important it's very possible it's very possible well we just better go to that first Samuel we'll come back to Ephesians 4 but first Samuel chapter 25 um, we find here we're gonna cut it down for, for the sake of time but uh, you've heard my wife and I teach on this before on, mm -hmm. on, on who who we got Abigail and the ball mm -hmm. and David mm-hmm <laughs> right right uh, Abigail was standing in between 
um, a foolish husband, Nabal, and a, a righteous David. But at this time, David was extremely angry. Yes. David was extremely angry. But Abigail's soft words calmed him. Well, we, we get to it. Verse <laughs> Samuel 25 and uh, verse 23. Abigail, uh, David is coming to confront the ball. Yes. Abigail stops him on the way. David is mad. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. He's ready to destroy. And if it would have been a man, a male soldier with mm -hmm. a spear or with a, with a weapon mm -hmm. that would have come out, David would have just discarded him. But look at how this woman toppled a kingdom and, and gained favor. Verse 23. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Verse 25, let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Bilal, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name. Mm -hmm. And folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. 29. 29. We're going down to 29. First Samuel chapter 25, verse 29. Verse 29. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. Abigail stopped angry David saying, God has you in his hands. David wanted to get vengeance on, um, on the ball yes. for wronging him. Now, let me tell you, I'm a pretty cool and calm guy, but recently my wife and I walked into a store, a CVS, to go and get some things yes. we needed, and we had our masks on, and right. we're being careful, and this older gentleman of another ethnicity uh, looks like he s supports the, the current administration, had a question for the worker we were, we were at the counter, at checkout the, at counter, the cashier. at the cashier, mm -hmm. He walks straight up, much closer than six feet, and he doesn't have a mask on or anything. And he was close to my wife. I'm like, hey, you, look, no, I, I said some things, y'all. I, I, I didn't say anything wrong or sinful, but I let it be known. No, don't, don't get close to my wife with yeah. no mask on. Mercy. So, so no, yeah, uh -oh. just literally happened. <laughs> yes, <bad. laughs> that that. Uh, I was upset. Yes. I was mad, but because this, this is this is my wife, man. Don't don't do that. Don't. <laughs> but what am I saying? Okay. I'm saying David had some indignation. David was upset. He, he was, was angry. He was mad. Furious. Furious. Yes. But but getting furious yes. back with the person doesn't work. That doesn't make it better. Right. Abigail took a whole different approach and she got a lot farther. Yes, she did. Proverbs 15, one soft answer turns away wrath. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, she, 29. she 29. Okay. I'm starting at the beginning. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life mm -hmm. with the Lord, thy God and the souls of thine enemies. Them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. Now, what is she saying there? With the sling and the slingshot and all that. It seems like Abigail heard a little something about David. <laughs> you know, they didn't have Instagram and, right. and Facebook back then, so the word got out about how David handled business with Goliath. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, kind of slipped that in, like, yeah, I know about you. You know, <laughs> I heard. Mm -hmm. And that helped to calm him down with the compliment, mm -hmm. you know, of his past... Uh, Involvement. Yes, she, it helped to calm him down. Mm -hmm. David is coming to get vengeance on right. the ball. She stops him. She comes. She knows just how to talk to a man. Let me just right. come. Let me just <laughs> say it that way. She's a woman, yeah. and she knows how to talk to a, a man. Women, That's you good. can't out masculinity a man. You can't do that. 
You know, some are trying, but but um, you can't be more manly than a man. There you go. There you <laughs> because what makes a man a man is much more than what you see. There's a lot of it's it's biological, it's emotional, mm -hmm. it's mental, it's psychological. Right. God made men to be men. And men, you can't out femininity a woman. You some are trying, but you can't do that. So she uses her femininity yes. to her advantage. Her oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> to her advantage. <laughs> to her advantage. And that's that's what God wants. She said, you know, God is going to take care of you just like a, you know, just like an expert with a slingshot yes. defeats his enemy with the slingshot. Can you see David? Can you see it, girl? You heard about me. You heard yeah. about what I did. You know, sticking out. You know, you know, I oh, just, yeah. it I wasn't. Did that. I, I did that. that. I, I did that. It, it wasn't no thing. You know, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> she kept complimenting yeah. him. And if you go down to verse um, number 35, verse 35. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. Mm -hmm. I have hearkened to thy voice, I have accepted thy person. It turned him around completely. Yes. Okay? Now, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, uh, we're talking about don't, we're, our subject is don't be a verbal assassin. Don't be a verbal assassin. Right. We've already dealt with point number one. I didn't give you point one. Point number one is verbal destruction. Verbal destruction. And we went over some of the points of verbal destruction. It gives the idea of being sarcastic, disrespectful, fault-finding, intimidating, sharp-tongued. Uh, a verbal assassin is sharp-tongued. They can right. talk. They have the gift of gab. Right. But 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 let me say this. Let us let, it, we uh, listen to us here. The gift of gab was given to you to serve God. There you go. It was given to you to serve God. First Corinthians chapter twelve, Ephesians chapter four, Romans chapter twelve talks about gifts, talents, and abilities. Right. And this mouth belongs to God. This mouth belongs right. to God. Amen. Our he our verbal ability. It's given to us to serve God, yes. not to lie, not to do wrong, not to curse people out, or not to cuss them out either, uh, but but to serve God. Yes. Our mouth belongs to God. Proverbs chapter 6, things that, that, that the Lord hates, one of them has to do with the tongue, yes. the mouth. So, so make sure that you're not a verbal assassin. Point number one, we talked about verbal destruction. Verbal destruction, we went a long way in that. Now point two, verbal construction. Verbal construction. The opposite. The opposite. There we go. We're supposed to construct. Ephesians Amen. 4, verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. For, for, I'm sorry. For, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Grace. Unto the hearers, no let don't let certain things come out of your mouth. Yes. Learn how to say. Someone said it. Learn what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and learn. Sometimes you don't need to say anything. Just let it go. Let it go. Not verbal mm -hmm. destruction, but verbal construction Contrast. is what I'm about to say. Will uh, the uh, the things that I'm about to say will it help the relationship or will it hurt? Mm -hmm. Okay. But that which is good. To the use of what? Edifying, edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What does edifying do? What is that about? It builds you up. It teaches you. It builds you, you up in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Builds you up in the spirit. It, it constructs us. It builds us up. Proverbs, uh, proverbial writer said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Right. Speak life into your marriage. Speak life into your children. Um, I, I was out of town mm -hmm. And I, I, years ago, and I preached at a congregation, and I talked about speaking life to your children. And, um, you know, one, telling, I didn't know who I was talking to. It was God right. working. Right. But, but the, I was saying, don't tell your child, oh, you're fat. You, you're always going to be fat. No one's going to want you. You speak life to that child. That's right. And, and encourage, and, encourage that child. Yes. Help the child. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, a sister came up to me after service mm -hmm. crying. Bitter tears. She said, that's what I do with my child 
uh, I'm, I'm negative, I mm -hmm. put her down, and, but speak life. Amen. That will help you. That will help Amen. your child. Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 4. Let your words be seasoned with salt so you may know how to answer and help everyone uh, in, in the way. And then communication involves um, our, our, our words. Uh, communication involves words, tone, and then uh, facial expressions and slash body language. Okay. Um, I want someone to put that in the chat. Communication. Three, three things that mm -hmm. affect communication. We're still on verbal construction. <laughs> three things that affect communication, words, tone, and body language. Words, tone, body language, okay? Words, some experts say that our words are about 7% of our um, um, communication. communication. Mm -hmm. But um, also, uh, they say that tone is about 20%. 3% of communication. communication. I could say... Um, I would bring that up so. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. agree. The tone opinion, is important. Though. Yeah, right. the tone is very important. Right. Uh, and, but, but the biggest factor in communication is your body language. Uh, facial, facial expressions, expression. body mm -hmm. language. Facial expressions and your body yeah. language. So make sure that that is uh, the way that it should be. Colossians 4 and verse 6. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So our speech should always be with what? Seasoned with salt. All right, good. So we should go find the salt shaker from, from no, the kitchen? not and... literal salt. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, definitely with consideration, uh, with humility, consideration of the other, mm -hmm. and with humility and meekness. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of that salt. Yes. The salt ingredients. Salt ingredients, yes. The salt mm -hmm. ingredients, that's what Abigail did. Yeah. Salt ingredients. Uh, in First Peter 3, mm -hmm. that's what Peter said Sarah did. She yeah. used salt ingredients, calling Abraham Lord. Yes, My Lord. goodness. Yeah, you sisters, y'all can get anything <laughs> you all want if you know how to talk. But brothers, we've got to be uh, humble. We've got to humble yeah. ourselves and learn that we have to learn to communicate effectively <laughs> with your wife and not just think you can say anything you want to mm -hmm. say. Over the years, I've heard wives that come and say, talk to us and want counseling and say, he just berates me. He puts me down. He puts the children down. And I'm sitting there thinking, this brother, this right. brother. Because at the, around us, around the church members, so sweet and, and kind, kind and, and encouraging, sweet, courteous, yeah. and, and we go on trips, we go knocking on doors, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, this brother? And she right. said, oh yes, that brother. And and mm -hmm. your, she yeah. said, he speaks kindly to everyone else. But, but her. Everyone but me. And she, yeah. she, she, so she says, yeah. I want some of that kindness too. Right. And sometimes it's the husband. He, he's more mm -hmm. quiet, mild mannered, and his wife is more demonstrative, and and that that's nothing wrong with that, as long as both people mm -hmm. stay in their God given roles. Amen. The wife Amen. give him respect. Right. Husband love your wife. Uh, respect him as your leader. Yes. Respect him as your husband. Uh, Sarah said, "Call him Lord." But that gives out there more than just something, you know, like we're talking about tone, body language, and facial expression. Right. All right, Lord, what you what do you want yeah. for dinner? No, we're talking about respect for him. I can't get yes. no comments on that. I can't get no comments. I can't get an amen. Can I get two amens amen. on that? Amen. Got one. All right, got one. <laughs> Can I get two eight, two more amens yes. on respecting the husband? That That's a part mm -hmm. of the problem here. Uh, you may have more education. You may be, uh, or, you know, you may be in your estimation more intelligent, more this, more that. But he is your husband, and you picked him. You picked him. You selected him. You your own hand. So when you yeah. got problems, first go to God and right. watch God, and and let God change you first, and He will fix you. Okay, I got an amen. I got a couple. We got a couple <laughs> amens. My goodness, that was tough to squeeze out some amens. But remember, our subject: don't be a verbal assassin. Many ways to. Uh, Live with in verbal destruction. Yeah. You can destroy your marriage 
just by the way you talk. You can destroy your children by the way you talk. Do you want to be a person that has lived in verbal destruction or verbal construction? construction. The construction is much better. Yes. Ephesians 4.29 Edify one another. Edify. Build up. That's construction. Mm -hmm. That's building up. Encourage one another. Encourage one mm -hmm. another. Keep studying these scriptures. Proverbs 15, 1 through 4. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Colossians 4, verse 6. Uh, and first we meant we also read 1 Samuel chapter 25. Read the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. And many other scriptures. And it will help you to practice uh, verbal construction mm -hmm. instead of verbal destruction we love you god bless you let us go to the lord in prayer father we love you thank you for providing for us thank you for guiding us this day help us to use our words to construct and not destruct help us to remember that my mouth belongs to the lord my eyes belong to the lord my ears belong to the lord all of me belongs to the lord Amen. we pray for all the couples all the married couples everyone uh, who may be going through any trial or tribulation, dear God, we pray that we as couples will stick closer together, that we'll be more unified, and that we will not allow the devil to come between us. Help us to be faithful, to be fruitful. We pray for the Church of Christ as a whole, all the sisters, all the brothers, uh, everywhere that the Church of Christ meets. We pray for strength for each congregation. We pray particularly for the Northside Church of Christ, Jacksonville, Florida, that we, dear God, will continue to save souls and helping souls to stay saved by the service that we give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Three o'clock. Singles. Oh, my goodness, we got a great uh, discussion. We're ready to give today, 3 p.m. And join us Sunday, tomorrow, Northside Church of Christ, 8 a.m. Mass worship uh, in person or on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. 10 a.m. Bible study, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and 11 a.m. Zoom. Uh, or, or actually, at 11 a.m., we're going to have our our uh, promotional exercise for our Bible classes, right. and we're looking forward to that. God bless you. Join us at the next appointed time. Thank you.